Hello, I'm Dr. Sinead Duggan, Senior Research Fellow at Trinity College Dublin in Ireland, and my research focuses on nutrition and pancreatic disease. So in this Mission Cure video, we will go over the following. What are vitamins and minerals and why are they important for health? Which vitamin and mineral deficiencies are common in pancreatitis? Who's at risk and why? Symptoms to look out for, and then some resources to learn more. Vitamins and min minerals are nutrients that your body needs in small amounts to work properly and to just stay healthy. Vitamins and minerals are collectively known as micronutrients. Most healthy people can get all the nutrients they need by having a balanced diet, by avoiding over restriction and by eating a good variety of food. However, some people may need to take extra supplements. Vitamins are grouped into two categories. Firstly, water soluble vitamins. These include the B vitamins and vitamin C. Our body doesn't store them and so we need to get them quite regularly from our diets. And if we take in too much, we just lose the excess in urine. And secondly, fat soluble vitamins. So these can be stored in the body, in the liver and fat tissues. For this reason, deficiency will take longer to happen. Fat soluble vitamins include vitamins A, D, E and K. Because they are stored, we must be careful not to take too much of these vitamins. Vitamins and minerals have a lot of functions in our body. For example, some vitamins need um, help us to release the energy from the food that we eat. They play a role in DNA synthesis. They allow for normal blood clotting and they act as antioxidants to protect cells from damage. Minerals also have many essential functions. For example, the formation of healthy teeth and bones, the transport of oxygen in our blood, the maintenance of normal blood pressure and the normal function of our nervous system. Vitamins and minerals are considered to be essential and this just means that we can't make them in our own bodies and so we need to get them from the food and drink that we ingest. There are a few exceptions to this. For example, we can make vitamin D when our skin is exposed to sunlight. Patients with chronic pancreatitis and recurrent acute pancreatitis are at risk of vitamin and mineral deficiency. This may be due to having a poor diet. For example, if you have a lot of pain or distressing gut symptoms, you may avoid a range of foods and eat a smaller and unvaried diet. And this may mean that you're eating very few micronutrients, putting you at a high risk of deficiency. In particular, to prevent symptoms, people with chronic pancreatitis may avoid dietary fat. And this may mean that you have a low intake of vitamins which are soluble in fat, specifically vitamins A, D, E and K. Note that in chronic pancreatitis, we don't recommend a fat-free diet. Rather, we aim for patients to be able to enjoy a wider variety of foods with the help of PERS or pancreatic enzymes. In addition to a possibly poor diet, patients with chronic pancreatitis may also malabsorb important nutrients, including the fat-soluble vitamins. So you may not absorb nutrients that you're eating or even taking as a supplement. And this is one of the reasons that it's crucial that you take adequate amounts of pancreatic enzymes or PERS. These can help to alleviate gut-related symptoms and then allow you to enjoy a wider variety of food. If you have regular untreated steatorrhea or fat malabsorption, then it's likely that you may develop fat-soluble vitamin deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency or insufficiency is a particular concern, as this may lead to bone mineral loss and ultimately osteoporosis. Vitamin D is essential for us to be able to absorb calcium from the food that we eat, and calcium is, of course, a building block of bones. Those who drink excess alcohol or who have a history of drinking excess alcohol are at risk of vitamin and mineral deficiencies and especially vitamin B1, which is also known as thiamine. Vitamin B12 deficiency could occur because the pancreatic enzyme protease is needed to allow the absorption of this vitamin in the terminal ileum, which is the last part of the small bowel. There isn't a lot of research around deficiency of minerals like magnesium, copper, selenium, calcium and iron, specifically in chronic pancreatitis. Although we do know that people with chronic pancreatitis who have restricted diets and who have uncontrolled malabsorption are at high risk of developing deficiency of these nutrients.
Those at highest risk are the people who have regular steatorrhea or fat malabsorption or diarrhea, as well as those who have poor diets. As mentioned, this may be due to the need to avoid various food and drink to prevent or manage gut symptoms. I want to stress that PERT or pancreatic enzymes are the mainstay of, stay of treatment for chronic pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis is a progressive condition, and this means that it worsens over time. And so all patients will eventually have EPI or exocrine pancreatic insufficiency to some degree. If you can control the symptoms, you will be able to enjoy a wide variety of foods, which means that you will naturally ingest more micronutrients. Inadequate or insufficient dosing of PERT may also be a factor. So you need to make sure that you're taking enough PERT for the food that you eat. And this may naturally change day to day. You may also need acid suppression medication. If you have a very acidic stomach with, with a lot of heartburn or acid reflux and an acidic small bowel, this may, may denature or destroy the enzymes. And this includes the enzymes that you make yourself as well as the enzymes that you take in tablet form. And so patients will also need acid suppression, acid suppression medication to make sure that their enzymes work well. Persistent malabsorption, despite apparently taking an, an adequate or enough PERT, may also be due to other conditions, including SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And this is more likely if you've had gastrointestinal surgery in the past or undiagnosed celiac disease, or an infection of the gut, including something like Giardia. It's also important to note that even if you don't have any obvious symptoms of fat malabsorption, you may still be malabsorbing to some degree. And so it's important to speak to your doctor, dietitian, and pancreatic team to make sure that you're getting appropriate and adequate treatment. You may have vitamin or mineral deficiencies without obvious or overt symptoms, and that's because we don't always know what's going on inside our bodies. Sometimes it might just be that we don't feel well or that we have low energy or fatigue. If you have overt or obvious or clear deficiency symptoms, then your levels of micronutrients are extremely low. Vitamin D deficiency is a significant risk factor for developing osteoporosis. And we know that about two thirds of patients with chronic pancreatitis have either osteoporosis or osteopenia. Studies also show, show that patients with chronic pancreatitis have a higher risk of fragility or atraumatic fractures. And so we need to be especially aware of the possibility of vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin B12 or cobalamin deficiency may take years to develop as in fact, our body can store a large amount of this vitamin. Vitamin B12 deficiency leads to a type of anemia known as megaloblastic anemia. And it can also cause symptoms such as apathy, irritability, memory loss, dementia, and psychosis. Vitamin K deficiency can lead to coagulation and bleeding disorders. And of course, we also need vitamin K for good bone health. Zinc deficiency can have many manifestations, including poor wound healing, conjunctivitis, dermatitis, alopecia, and frequent infections. Magnesium deficiency can result in a loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, confusion, weakness, tremor, numb or tingling hands, leg cramps, especially at night, and muscle twitching. Iron deficiency can cause anemia, fatigue, pallor, which is a more pale than normal appearance, breathlessness and susceptibility to infections. I want to stress, it's important to note that these symptoms may not occur in everyone and that they may also be unrelated to nutrient deficiency. And so if you have concerns, it's important to link with your doctor and your medical team to understand how best to manage your specific condition. There have been some published case reports in the literature of severe vitamin deficiencies in patients with chronic pancreatitis. These include eye defects, including keratitis and eye ulceration in patients with vitamin A deficiency, and vitamin A deficiency can also be associated with night blindness. Neurological symptoms and a phenomenon called brown bowel syndrome in patients with vitamin E deficiency, and osteomalacia or adult rickets, severe myopathy, decreased muscle power in three cases with um, vitamin D deficiency. 
In all of these cases, the patients with chronic pancreatitis had other conditions as well as pancreatitis, including diabetes, celiac disease, or surgery. In Mission Cures related videos, you can learn how to manage your nutrition needs and understand exocrine pancreatic insufficiency and PERT dosing for proper nutrient absorption. Thank you very much for your attention.